One critical thing that you need to know if you're about to build your software technology product is what does my technology team need to consist of? You see, before you dive in and start investing this money and time to building your app, your software, your platform, if you don't have the right people on your team, then you're setting yourself up for failure. You see, a lot of people dive in, they hire whoever gives them the best price, they get to the end just before their launch and they realize that from the beginning their technology team didn't even have what it takes and the result is they're looking at something that they literally have to throw away rather than being able to take that to their customers. I'm Arya Chittasi, a director of Ingenesis Ventures and we are building software technology products of our own every day and we help hundreds of other companies do the same. So listen close if you are about to go into the build out process for your software product, because we're going to go through the difference between front end and back end developers, the difference between engineers and architects and programmers. We're gonna go through the value of project managers and also map out all about the QA process in software development. I remember back one of my earliest ventures, technology ventures I was a part of, we did everything we could to build our product, but it just seemed that nothing was working. We had a brilliant idea, we thought, and we had validated it with customers. We knew it had market potential. I remember interviewing for our first software developer and we were there looking through each of their CVs, you know, seeing which one is better, which one is worse. We ended up choosing this one and we said, okay, great. This is the project. Here are all of our ideas, you know, me and the other directors. And we said, go and build this. And they would sit there behind the computer, you know, a month would pass, two months. And eventually three months later, they popped out of their desk and they said, here it is. You know, here, here is the software you've been waiting for. And we looked at it and we, we just said, what on earth is that? You know, the pictures in our mind were completely different to the picture that was in the developer's head, right? And long story short, we had a whole launch day, we had 100 people there, and we ended up not even launching that, that software product. We chucked it away. And so what we realized is that there are a lot of people, business owners, entrepreneurs, innovators, they have these brilliant ideas, and then they're diving in to getting their software products built and they don't have a clue what types of skill sets are needed, you know, what type of processes they need to follow, even though people are saying yes to them each and every step of the way and saying, yes, we can do this, yes, it's coming. You need to know as a business leader how to cut through that and really get to the core of what is it going to take to have your software build be successful. There is a difference between a front-end developer and a back-end developer. You need to realize that each developer has spent their whole degree or, or maybe a supplementary course focusing on just a single line of code, of programming language. And one, one way we can decipher these is front end and back end. Now, what's the difference? Front end is all of the items that you see on a screen, the buttons, right, the moving charts, uh, as you scroll up and down your page, whether that's an app or, or on a website, this is all called front end. It's called front end because it's talking to your customers, your users on the front end of the, the software. These front end developers are skilled at coding these buttons, coding the animations, coding the pop-ups, and this is what they are good at. It's like them being trained in plumbing, right? They understand how it all works. Now, on the other hand, a back-end developer, as you may be guessing, is everything on the back-end. So once you enter your name, once you enter your details, your data, it gets saved and stored in the back-end, and then we might run a really detailed calculation on it. This is what happens in the back-end. Now, this runs things like logic uh, flows, you know, asking if someone responded this, let's have this happen in the software. If someone responded that, let's go this way. So these are completely different uh, uh, code bases a lot of the time. And these developers are very skilled in what they do in either A, front-end development or B, back-end development. 
there are a few exceptions and some programming languages are being updated and released every day, changing the game. But this is a good place to start because if one person is skilled at plumbing and another is skilled as an electrician, we shouldn't assume that just because they're a tradesperson that they can do everything, right? So back end and front end is one of your most basic uh, ways to separate the skill sets of what your programmers do. It breaks down even further than that, but that will give you a good start for you to see you know, what the difference is. Now, what's the difference between a programmer or a developer and a tech lead, a solutions architect, or a solutions engineer? Imagine we are building a house on a slant, right? When you build a house on a flat piece of ground, it's relatively easy, right? Almost any builder and bricklayer can come in and start building. But when you build on a tilt, what do you need to do? You need to sit there and look at the, the land, measure the angle and think, oh, we're gonna need a few pillars here to really hold up the weight. An engineer comes in and they do all the calculations to make sure your house isn't gonna collapse. Well, it's the same thing in software technology. If you just dive in and you have your brick layers, now your brick layers are programmers. These people sit and write lines of code that make up your code base of what your app, your software, your website is made up of. But if you just get people to dive in and start laying bricks everywhere, you may miss the, the key architecture and engineering that is required and you end up having just a pile of bricks and something that doesn't sustain its weight. So when you dive into your next project, I want you to start to look at, do we have the senior people here? Again, sometimes they're called tech leads, software engineers, solutions architects. Do we have these people who are senior enough and experienced enough to design what architecture do I need for my application? And they will be asking questions like, tell me a bit more about your longer term vision, right? What, what are some of the things you need to do in the future for your, your program or your software? And these people often will not write a line of code or be far less involved with the day to day, but they'll need to sit with you, understand these requirements and plan out the, the whole ordeal. Now, on the other hand, a software developer, a programmer, these people are skilled at laying the lines of code, right? These are the bricklayers. Uh, they should be very focused. They should be quite technically minded and often they, they have no uh, real appreciation or understanding for the business requirements of the project and that's okay. So if you start making this distinction, you'll start to notice whether or not you are actually planning your application for long-term success growth and scalability, or whether you're, you're simply getting in a number of bricklayers and you're just building something um, ad hoc or without that planning. In software development, is it important to have a project manager? When we look at a software project, if we are building something of scale and not just a one or two page website, well, firstly, we're going to have at least five or six people involved. For example, front end developers, back end developers, software architects. I mean, the, there's quite a decent number of skill sets involved, probably about five university degrees. Now, when you have this going on, it is complex and you can't just expect five people to go about everything that they are doing run a six month project and expect them to arrange all of the, the process and the flows by themselves, you are setting yourself up to have a delayed finish. We had this one instance where a, a woman came to us and she said, uh, in Genesis, I'm having trouble with my developers. And we said, okay, you know, how long are they taking? She said, they promised me three months and now we've just passed the 18 month mark. Right, and she, she was about to just, you know, sort of fall on the ground and close the business because there weren't the right processes happening and there wasn't someone accountable for the whole project to turn out. So this is the value of a project manager. If you are building something of scale, you are going to have many people involved and you want them focused on their own things and your project manager is, an, is accountable to make sure that they all do their job well.
Let's talk about the value of quality assurance in the software build out process. You see, a lot of the time we look at developers and we think, okay, great, I should be able to tell them what to do, they'll go and do it, and they should have everything completely accurate. But we forget that things like Microsoft uh, Windows that, that you've probably used before, it's more than 50 million lines of code. Right? So these are very sophisticated things and sometimes it, it sounds easy because we just say, hey, go and build this. Well, this is where the value of quality assurance comes in. Once a technician is there and they're building everything, the quality assurance person comes in, it could be a tester, it could be the manager, they come in, they check the specs of, hey, this is what we wanted to build in the first place. And now that we've got these tens of thousands of lines of code, have we met our objectives? And they take a third party view challenging whether each one has been done or not. And it creates a really good loop feedback loop to increase the quality of the software. You see many people dive in and thinking, oh, if I find a good programmer, they're gonna, have, they're gonna not have any bugs. And it couldn't be further from the truth. I would invite you to go and look at Facebook's uh, a backlog and, and list of all of these bugs every day they are dealing with thousands of bugs in their software, but they have 17,000 staff to keep dealing with those, right? So when you have a quality assurance tester or manager, their job is to go through and make sure the quality of what is being built is hitting its target, and they dramatically reduce those bugs to finish with a polished product. Let's play a quick game. I'd like you to think of Microsoft Windows. I'm sure you've used it before. How many lines of code do you think makes up the Windows program? Well, it's actually 50 million lines of code plus, right? And you want to think about what huge asset, you know, this is an asset that has been worth billions of dollars to Microsoft for years. And it's, it's very sophisticated, right? Facebook is made up of 62 million lines of code. So there's no coincidence that they have 17,000 staff maintaining that. So once you build a piece of code, it is an asset, but it is also something that is or, or organic. It's, it's an organism, it's constantly changing. It's not something you build once and you, like a shoe and you just leave it there. So with something this complex and with something that can have quite a substantial amount of value in the economy, we need to remember that it takes very smart people to get this thing done. And that is why you need all of these different people in your technology team if you are out to build a technology company of substantial value. To summarize, if you are going in to build a multi-million dollar technology business, you shouldn't be just relying on one person. Instead, you need to be checking in that you've got a project manager, someone accountable for the whole thing. You need front-end and back-end software developers. You need software architects or engineers who plan out the whole architecture of your program. And then you need quality assurance managers to make sure the quality of the project is second to none. At Ingenesis, when we are building our own technology projects, we make sure all of these people are involved every single time. Otherwise, we're literally planning to fail. So if you are in this position of being ready for your build out, Whoever you speak with, make sure you have all of these key elements involved. At the beginning, some of these skill sets may need to be part-time or ad hoc before you scale up. But if you skip any of these, then unfortunately, you may be setting yourselves up to take on the risk of your software product absolutely hitting a wall and even collapsing in the time when you need it most. Anyway, I hope that this gives you some solid guidance as you start talking to the technology team that you are building and I hope to see the product that you've built on the other side.